right. Shalom. Shalom. We sound foremost, we give all praises to Yahweh. Ba'asham Yahushai. Ba'asham Rakakudash. We give double honors to the apostles of great men who not do rule well. By the teaching of the men of the whole plant, since they left, we just want to join that camp. Brother Howard, Brother Kalab, Mr. Makaza, we just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. And the name of the lesson would be, Why Ten Plagues? All right, pursuing back to ancient Egypt. Why did the Lord do the ten plagues that he did on Egypt? Well, the whole conclusion is the Lord was showing that he was the true God and none else. The Lord was showing Israel that he is the God to worship. All right, because when you go back to Leviticus, I believe it's Leviticus 19 or 18, he says that the doings of the nations you shall not do. So the commandments was based off of things that they were doing in Egypt. And the things that the nations were doing, so the Lord was telling Israel, don't do those things. So, for all you know, some of the Israelites was worship, not not for all you know, they were worshiping idols in Egypt because when they left Egypt, the first thing that they did when they didn't see Moses for a while was went back to idolatry. Okay. All right, so they were worshiping idols in Egypt. So the idols that Israel were worshiping in Egypt, the Lord basically put them to shame to show Israel that I am your God. So this is why the Lord brought plagues on the land to basically confound their gods. All right? Gwen, the Exodus. This is the book of Exodus chapter 12 and verse 12. It says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahushai. Can. So he said, of all the gods of Egypt, he will execute judgment. All right? And I have a list here with the gods and the plagues. All right? So the first one, it says, um, when he turned the water into blood. Now it says, happy is the Egyptian god of the Nile. And down here in Trinidad, it have a brand of rice that they call happy rice. Okay. All right. Now, how how where does rice grow? Rice rice grows in the marshlands. All right. And usually, with the Egyptians, they used to do when the when the flood waters come in during the spring, when it goes down, it leaves a fresh depository of of of, uh, of soil. So that is where they will plant their crops, and that is where rice usually planted. All right. So when the Lord did that, the Lord showed him that, hey, your God, who you believe is the controller of the Nile, look what I just did. I turned his water into blood. Now let him stop that. All right? That is just like with, with, um, with Elijah and the prophets, the prophets of Baal. When he said, hey, call on him, Lord, he probably sleeping. And then sure he said, hey, soak the, soak the the, the, the offering with water, so the tabernacle with water. And then he not even lighted, he called Yahabah Shemiel Shai to light it. And it did so, just to show that Yahabah Shemiel Shai is the true God. Alright? And they're going on, it says what? It says, frogs coming from the Nile. Alright? It says, Heket, Egyptian goddess of fertility, water, and renewal you understand it says Heket the Egyptian goddess had the head of a frog all right and when you look up happy he said happy the Egyptian god was a water bearer so the Lord was doing judgment on the Egyptian gods all the gods at Egypt the Lord did judgment now in these last days the Lord coming to do it again the Lord coming to bring judgment on Jesus he coming to bring judgment on Allah he coming to bring judgment on Jehovah coming to bring judgment on all them, um, them Elamite gods all the gods of the world the Lord coming to bring judgment alright the another god it says the plague of the lice on the earth it says Geb the Egyptian god of the earth Geb the Egyptian god was over the dust of the earth right so you would have controlled all them creatures of the dust now the Lord stir your earth up and bring the lice and they would have been praying on to Geb for it to go, but guess what? Geb couldn't answer. Alright? 
Gab didn't pay the phone bills so the phone got cut so he couldn't answer when they called. Mm. Alright? Here's the next one. It said the sum of flies. It says, um, it says Kepri, Egyptian god of creation, movement of the sun, a reboot. Kepri, the Egyptian god, had the head of a fly. In a stance, the Lord bring judgment on Kepri. It was all strategic. All the all the plagues was all strategic. All right. Um. All right. Move on to the next one. It says death of cattle and livestock. It says Hathor, Egyptian goddess of love and protection. It says usually the Egyptian goddess was depicted with a head of a cow. So where was Hathor when the livestock was dying? Where was Hathor? All right. Isis, Egyptian goddess of medicine and peace. It says Egyptian plague, ashes turned to boils and sore. So how come Isis couldn't heal them? Where was Isis when the people needed healing? Because they would have prayed to these gods. Because when you look up in um in this well in this game um Assassin's Creed Odyssey, one of the close the highlighter. One of the things where they say they show that um that the ancient Greeks they believed that sickness was plagued from the gods. So when anyone's sick, they would have prayed to the gods, that perspective God, for, for that perspective healing. All right? And they were partially true because the scriptures say he that sin against the most, so let them fall into the hand of the position. So when the people got sores and got lice and they couldn't be healed, they realized that Isis, Isis, now nah, Isis is not the God. Isis is not the God. All right, go ahead. Jeremiah 2 and 28, he said, but where are thy gods that don't... All right, so I care about that um, phone got cut off, so we're going to start over the scripture. Yeah, it is Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 28, it says, but where are thy God that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of trouble. For according to the numbers of the city, uh, did I go as or Ju or, um, Judah? Can you understand? So all the all the gods that that Israel was worshiping, the Lord brought judgment on them. And in these last days, the Lord gonna bring judgment on them again. All right. So I'm gonna read another god. This is um, Egyptian plague when hail rained down from the sky with fire, and it says Nut, Nut. Is the Egyptian goddess of the sky. So guess what? She couldn't even control. It's like it's like when you have a diarrhea, you um you, you, you can't control your bowels. Understand? Something else in control your bowels. So if not was the god, the goddess of the sky, and guess what? The Haba Shemir Shai mean hail fall down from her heavens, and she couldn't control it. So what the Lord was doing is the Lord was showing me, hey, all these things I created it. My hands formed it, okay. not these idols. I, Yahaba Hashem Shai created all these things. All right, going on, it says, it says the locust sent from the uh, from the sky. It says set the Egyptian goddess of storms and disorder. But guess what? Each time before all these things happen, you know what the Lord did. The Lord did. He said before it was brought forth, you know, I told thee. So every time the Lord said Moses, hey, tell them such and such can happen. In such and such time. And such and such did happen in such and such time. That said time. To prove that, hey, if Moses said, yeah, how are we going to do this? Look, it happened. Look, it happened. So then, it's not our gods in control but Moses God, the God of the Hebrews, Yahweh is his name. Yahweh Shai is his son's name. Go ahead. In Judah chapter 9 and verse 14. And make every nation and tribe to acknowledge that thou art the power of all power and might. And that there is none other that protected the people of Israel but thou. Can. Understand? Everybody else said it. Understand? Can. 
Okay, the, the Most High did these acts because he heard the cries of his people. And not all Israel today is of Israel. So that the cry that the Lord here in of Israel is the elect. The elect, the men that going out there and sighing and crying, calling on the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, praying for the speedy destruction of this place. And he's going to do it. Because the scripture says, Shall not the Lord avenge his very elect, which cry unto him day and night? Yes, and he shall do it speedily. And a part of him bringing that vengeance is to, to cast down these idols. Because these idols is the, the stronghold on our people, which we were once under. You know, some of us were once worshipping these dumb idols. As you were led. As the scripture says, you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. So what the Lord coming to do is abolish the idols. So hey, heading into the kingdom, it ain't going to have no more falling for Israel. We ain't going to be worshipping no idol God. The scripture says, from the, from the rising of the sun, even to the going down, the same his name is going to be dreadful among the Gentiles. In the kingdom to come, it ain't going to have these heathens worshipping no six hand and seven hand, or no, um, with note, mm -hmm. and, um, these false gods, they gonna be no more. It says, um, in the book of Exodus 20 and 2, it says, Thou shalt have no other god before me. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness or any likeness of thine thing, of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous power. And jealousy is the word, the rage of a man. So now, the scripture also says in Exodus 15, treat the Lord as a man of war. So he's about to rage war, just like he did. He raged war against these idols. He's going to rage war against them. And in raging the war that he's bringing against them, he's going to prove again that these these gods that you set up is but mere idols. No gods. Yeah. No some, power. Some mm -hmm. This is Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 35. It says, But I, as my brethren, offer my body and life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching Yahweh that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou, by torments and plagues, mayest confess that he alone is God. And that is what went on in Egypt, even with Nebuchadnezzar. When Nebuchadnezzar was like a beast, when he, when he said, when he regained his he, he, he mind, he started confessing how where is God. Mm -hmm. Epiphanies. When Epiphanies was sick, he said, hey, that man is God. Because guess what? No other good, none can save you. The scripture said, none can deliver out of his hand. So when the Lord have you in that fist, you could cry, you could cry out for whoever you want. Give me the judges 10. You could cry out to whoever you want. Only your heart bash me or shy could save you. And that is when you're going to bow down your head and realize and acknowledge, yes, he is God. Go ahead, Judges chapter 10 and starting at verse 13. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And let them deliver you. Give me Jeremiah 2. Read, read already. Read, read it again. again. Read it again. Jeremiah chapter Last 2. Son, let them, let your words deliver you. That is the Lord going to tell two thirds of Israel. Because why? Because, um, Pussy, you go read Isaiah 8. You read, you understand? They're going to realize that the gods can't save them. And then they're going to turn on to your heart about Shemi and Shai. But and the Lord going to tell them, he say, hey, don't come to me. Go to your gods. Go and worship. Go and call Jesus. Let Jesus save you. All right? The same Jesus he was worshiping on the 25th of December, who you didn't want to hear. Go and let him save you. Go and let Allah save you. Don't come to me. Go ahead. Jeremiah 2 and 28. Jeremiah 2 and says, but... It says, but where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee. If they can save thee. You understand? If they can save thee, let them arise. You understand? Go ahead. If they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. Go ahead. For according to the number of the city, of the cities are thy gods, O Judah. Can. You understand? Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 21. It says, and they shall pass through it, 
hardly be still and hungry. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall and fret. Jacob's trouble, they're going to fret themselves, they're going to worry. Go ahead. They shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God. Yeah, they're going to say, fuck Jesus, boy, fuck Allah, you set me up. Mm. Because why they're going to realize we pray on not and you're not helping us. Mm -hmm. They will say, great is the blood of Jesus. You understand? Everything and nothing is not going to happen because why? You're going to realize that these gods are false gods. Mm -hmm. When the Lord shall arise and shake terribly earth, you're going to realize that they can't save. Exactly. And one of the gods that the, the most are about to put on is Esau. Because Esau is, Esau is our people God today too as well because they trust in him. A lot of you all, you all believe in these maxims. You all believe in the vax. You understand? So every time something happens, you run to Esau. That, that shows that you're serving him. And that mark that he's about to bring is going gonna, is gonna to sign, sign the deal. When you take it, you're saying that, all right, Esau, you are now my God. You understand? I'm, I'm your servant. Because that's what you used to do back then when, when, I, when I serve on the one and leave the master. Mm -hmm. You understand? He um, take the, the, is the old and, bought, and pierce him through. Okay. And that's what Esau about to do. You know, permanently have you all as his as his um servants. It's a very Isaiah two, and um, start from seventeen. It says, and the loftiness, the loftiness of men, of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and Yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day, mm -hmm. and the idols, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. Can in the scriptures talk about the false prophet that bringing miracles? Because look, the Lord, the Lord already doing judgment. Just in 2015, the Lord caused a crane to fall along in the mosque over there in Saudi Arabia. All right. If I can say this, this year itself, um, the big Mary, you know, Lady of Love, Michael Church in Trinidad here, lightning strike it and lick off the head. And, and the womb, and the woman where Mary is, the goddess of fertility. Goddess of fertility. So the Lord said, hey, guess what? Like you listen, you literally seen a big hole. In the womb of the statue. Right. So the Lord showing, hey, these gods are no gods. These gods are no gods. Alright? We go to another God. This is the um the three days of darkness. It says Ra is the god of the sun. This would be this one of the Egyptians' greatest deity. The god of the sun. So where was Ra? When the Lord darkened him, when the Lord seeking to bring darkness on Egypt, where was Ra? Where was the so-called supreme God and his son when Yahweh Shemel Shai told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh he's going to darken the land? Where was Ra? They prayed and they cried, but Ra couldn't answer. Because Ra himself couldn't see that through that thick darkness. Alright? And guess what? It says what? It says the death of the firstborn, it says fear is the ultimate power in Egypt. And we said in Exodus 12, you're going to bring judgment on the firstborn of Pharaoh. Okay. So look, even your God, Pharaoh, can't save you. He destroyed Pharaoh's army. That is really, and the brother now talk about that. Egypt, Esau is a God. Just like e, Pharaoh was a God back then, this modern day Egypt. Mm -hmm. This is Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 2. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard publish and conceal not say babylon is taken bell is confounded morodok is broken in pieces her idols are confounded her images are broken in pieces so the lord not only coming to destroy esau he coming to destroy the gods of this kingdom to show his people that he is god to show all the people that he is god right there's something is the book of um the bell of the dragon history of the bell of the dragon from the apocrypha and verse starting at verse 22 it says therefore the king slew them and delivered bell into daniel's power who destroyed him and his temple and in that same place there was a great dragon which they of babylon worshipped and the king said unto, ba un unto daniel Will thou also say that this is of brass? Lo, he liveth, he eateth, and drinketh. Thou canst not say that he is no living God. Therefore worship him. Then said Daniel unto the king, I will worship the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, my power, for he is the living power. But give me leave, O king, and I shall slay this dragon without sword, 
or staff, the king said, I give thee leave. Then Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and did seed them together and made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth. And so the dragon burst in sunder. And Daniel said, Lo, these are the gods you worship. When they of Babylon heard that, they took great indignation and conspired against the king, saying the king... What, what, what god is there that you could destroy? What god is there that could, that could die? Then that is not a god. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And they conspired against the king, saying the king is become a Jew. And he had destroyed Bel. He had slain the dragon and put the priest to death. So they came to the king and said, Deliver us, Daniel, or else we will destroy thee and thine house. Right? We'll just, just jump down to um, the conclusion of it. Boom, boom, boom. Verse. What about when they threw Daniel in the pit? Can. Who sealed up the lion's mouth? Mm -hmm. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who made the fire a cool breeze? Over and over, the Lord Yahweh Shemel Shai showed you all that He is God, and He coming back to do it again in this time, as He said when He arise to shake terribly the earth. Mm -hmm. a quick one, eh? is um, um Psalm ninety six and four. It says, "For Yahweh is great, and greatly to be praised. He is, He is to be feared above all gods. Damn, He's to be feared above all gods." Right. So continue in verse forty. It says, upon the seventh day the king went be, to bewail Daniel. And when he came to the den, he looked in, and behold, Daniel was sitting. Then cried the king with a loud voice, saying, Great art thou, O Lord, power of Daniel. And there you go. Mm -hmm. And there you go. That is what they're going to say. Great is Yahabal Shemiel Shai. And there is none other beside thee. And he drew him out and cast those that were the cause of his destruction into the den, and they were devoured in a moment before his face. Where were their gods? Where was where was where was Bell? Where was Bell and the dragon? The way to be found. It's the book of um, Micah. Micah chapter five. Micah chapter 5 and verse 13 it says thy graven images also will I cut off and thy standing images out of the midst of thee and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands and I stand and I will execute that like verse 15 and I will execute vengeance and in anger and fury upon the heathen such as they have not heard such as they have not heard the Lord about to to rain nuclear missiles this time you know all these different erected idols around the world in venezuela they have a a big erected statue of um, mary they call it the virgin de la paz the virgin of peace you understand big tall where they where they visit in Trujillo and they worship before our feet and whatnot that gonna get a nuke that gonna get this that gonna be there in the kingdom all right that gonna get taken down all right even in um, america the statue of liberty when you go to America, it can be annihilated. So all the different, the, the statue of Baphomet, because they have that in America. You know, the, all the different Christopher Columbus, Christopher Cologne, um statues are erected. That can be taken down, even down here in Trinidad. All right, it had um, some heavy rainfalls and whatnot, and trees fell. You know, and one of the trees fell and licked off the arm. The arm of Chris, the, the, the statue that they have of Christopher Columbus. And guess what? Mm -hmm. That is the Lord tree taken away strength. strength. Because you know one thing they say about Cristobal Colum, they say when he was killing the natives, mm -hmm. he said not for one what second, he put on his sword. Mm -hmm. So I hope you keep that indignation in slavery, Esau. Okay. Because we're gonna surely keep it. We're gonna, as the scripture say in Isaiah 33, we're gonna deal treacherously with you. Okay. All right, all the anything? Yeah, yeah um, well, the first Samuel 5 and 1. It says, and the Philistine took the ark of Yahweh and brought it to Eben Ezer and to Asdod. Where the Philistine took the ark of Yahweh, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. And when they of Asdod arose early on the morrow, behold, Dagon was fallen 
upon his face to the earth before the ark of Yahweh. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose, and Dagon is the fish god. Mm -hmm. I just hey, said, guess what? They're worshipping Dagon until this day in the Roman Catholic Church. Because the helmet that they have, the, the, uh, the high priest have one is, is, is the same Babylonian helmet that the high priest used to worship. God. Dagon used to have one. Mm -hmm. the, um, the Pope. The same, the same helmet that he have on mm -hmm. is the same Dagon helmet that the priest back then used to wear. Well, um, four. it says, and when they arose early, and, the, and they worship Serapis too. Understand they worship Serapis? Starbucks, that Starbucks sign, like Dagon, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, oh gosh, we just call them the order, the serpents. I can't remember the one on the on the Vatican City they have an emblem with a dragon. They tell me call me order the silver's order the dragon or something like that. Hmm. When okay. verse 4 it says, And when they arose early on the morrow, morning, behold, Dagon was fallen upon his face to the to the ground before the ark of Yahweh. And the head of Dagon and both of the palm of his hands were cut off upon the threshold only. The stump of Dagon was left to him. Therefore, neither the priest of Dagon nor any that come unto Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod unto this day. Yeah, because the Lord brought judgment. The Lord brought judgment on Dagon. And he's being going to do again. Alright? He says, But the hand of Yahweh was heavy upon them of Ashdod. And he destroyed them and smote them with emerald. Can and the Lord uh, keep bringing destruction upon destruction them? Can. And the gods couldn't save them. And that is when they realized, hey, we have to take back that 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 ark. Mm -hmm. When? And I'll prove you for this after. Can. This is the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 15, and verse 3. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of power, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works. Lord power almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Thy judgments are made manifest. That's the Lord making his judgments manifest right now. Mm -hmm. Right? This is the final piece of prayer. This is Zephaniah chapter 2. Verse 11, it says, Yahweh will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, every one from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. So the Lord is going to bring judgment on all the gods to show all the world that he is God, and all nations shall worship before him. As the scripture said, and we just read, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? All the nations shall come and worship before thee. Because why the Lord do judgment on all the gods of the world? Alright? And that they soon to come. Alright? So that no hope was any fine. Wanna give all praises to Yahweh, Bashami Al Shai, Basham Kakwadash. We give double honor to the apostles of great mercy and do rule well. Salutations to the men of the whole plan. Say let me see some trend that camp. Say inshallah, man, stay strong.